Are you stewarding the measure of faith that God has given you? We're going to talk about all that and more in this episode of Revival Mission. Hey there, my name is Jeremy Fontenot. This is Revival Missions, where it is our passion to make the name of Jesus famous and to inspire you to take up your cross and follow Him daily. Today, I want to talk to you about the subject of faith. This is a very, very important topic. This is uh, the essence of relationship with God. And it is so needed in the times that we are living in. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs an injection of faith. Not anything else, not what the government is handing out. What the church needs is what the Lord Jesus Christ inspired his disciples to walk in. And that is faith. God calls us to live in the realm of faith, seeing with our spiritual eyes and understanding God's word concerning the subject of faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. When I think about the kingdom of God, I think faith, 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 faith. It's all over the Bible. It's what God has called us to walk in. It is the very thing It is the very thing that brings heaven to earth. And that's what Jesus told us to pray for. Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be here on earth just as it is in heaven. The only way that that will take place is when God's people walk in a measure of faith. In fact, we are called to have God's kind of faith. And so I don't want to get ahead of myself But um, I want to open up, you know, if you're going to talk about the subject of faith, you have to begin by looking in Hebrews chapter 11. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. This is the faith chapter, the, the great hall of faith. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you will, jump down to verse uh, 6 with me. The Bible says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder, of those who diligently seek Him. What incredible scriptures. You know, coming to God, you have to not only believe that there, there, there is a God out there, but that God is who He says He is. God reveals Himself all throughout Scripture. He reveals Himself to His people. He revealed Himself to Abraham, when God called Abraham to go and sacrifice his son, something that God would do, ultimately do. But yet he called Abraham, and and this is how he knew that Abraham was his friend, that Abraham would do whatever God asked him to do. And so God asked him to sacrifice his son, which in many cultures at that time they they would sacrifice. Today, many people all around the world, they sacrifice their babies. Some people call it abortion. It's all the same thing. But uh, God called Abraham to sacrifice his son, and he goes up on the mountain, and God stopped him and provided a ram. Now, God had already spoken to Abraham to go and sacrifice his son, but Abraham knew that God was not going to ultimately require him to sacrifice his son because whenever he goes up on the mountain, his son asked him, Isaac, he said, what about, you know, the sacrifice? 
And he said that the Lord will provide. He said, me and my, my child, we're going to go up and we're going to come back. Abraham was a man of faith. And the Bible says that when Abraham was about to put his knife to, the, to his son, that the Lord stopped him and provided a ram in the bush. And Abraham called God Yahweh Jireh. Yahweh Jireh. That means the Lord is my provider. God revealed himself to Abraham as his provider. And God is still the provider for his people today. He's still the provider for his children today. He is our source. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the world or in the economy today. You know, just, just today I paid you know, quite a bit of money for gas. And, you know, I could complain or I could look to God and say that you're my source, even in difficult times, even in trials and, and, and you know, tribulations and, and a, a bad economic crisis. I still look to God and I know that he will provide. And every month he does. He provides. He blesses me and provides for all of my needs. And he goes over and above and beyond all that I could dream or imagine. So God reveals himself in this way. He revealed himself to the Israelites that he is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. We are not living in a time where God's power is not available. It is available just as it was thousands of years ago. God heals today. That is a principle that is in effect. It's found in the Bible, found in the Word of God. Don't ever let anyone talk you out of that principle. He heals today. As a matter of fact, God's Word works today. It works today. It is, it is God's word. It's living. It is active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. God's word works, but you have to work God's word by your faith. Now, there's two things. If you want to please God, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to believe that God is. He is who he revealed himself to be in the scriptures. And that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seeking God doesn't look like this, going to church once or twice a week. Diligently seeking God is running hard after God. It is pursuing God with all that is in you. When I wake up in the morning, I look outside. It's, it's another day to experience God and to walk in faith. There's so much evidence of his existence. And so I seek him. I grab my Bible, I grab my coffee, and I spend time with God. I love the freshness of, of a morning when I wake up and just my mind is refreshed. I drink a cup of coffee. And I just get in God's word. I begin to write. I begin to journal. These things become the messages, the very things that I'm sharing with you right now. God speaks to me. And my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I ask God to speak through me, to impart faith, to impart life, to impart light to people. We are called to be the light of the world. We should have hope on the inside of us. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But we live in a system, in a kingdom, that has a system of rewards. If we will diligently seek God, He will reward us and He will reward our faith. And my hope is that you would have a harvest of the things that you are believing for, the things that you are contending for, that you would have a harvest of faith. What seeds do you have planted from God's word that you're hoping, not just hoping, but you know that you, you have received it by faith and you'll see it come to pass. You'll see your faith working for you. What, what seeds are you planting within your own heart? 
What things are you believing for? There's a difference between faith and hope. You know, you can hope for a raise. You can hope for a a spouse. You can hope for a a promotion. You can hope for a new car. Well, that's hope. But faith, faith is built upon the Word of God. Faith takes scriptures that are that, that, that are verses in the Bible concerning the very thing that you desire, the very thing that you hope for, and it gives substance to what you desire, what you, you hope for. And Jesus unpacks something that is so profound in the book of, of Mark. And if you would just turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 11. Now, this this is Jesus speaking. This isn't some some televangelist. This is Jesus speaking. A, a lot of people they want to knock televangelists, they want to knock this person and that person for having faith. But you know, Jesus Jesus never beat up anyone for having too much faith. As a matter of fact, when the centurion came along and began to be very precise in what he wanted, Jesus marveled at his faith. The centurion said, no, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. All you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus marveled. His mouth dropped, at least, you know, that's how I see it happening. But Jesus marveled at this man's faith and said, I haven't I haven't seen faith. I haven't found faith like this in all of Israel. I mean, is Jesus marveling at your faith? I want him to marvel at my faith. And I remember years ago when we went to the mission field, when we left for Southeast Asia, we didn't know who was going to support us. I think one church had said that they were going to support us at $100 a month, and they never did. I mean, all we had was God's word. That's it. That's all we had. And we went, traveled on the other side of an airplane uh, of the world. We hopped in an airplane, went all the way to the other side of the world. Here we are. Barely any money in our account. I think I had enough just to you know, pay for the insurance on my car that hadn't been sold yet. We sold it whenever we returned. But that was it. I mean, we, somebody gave us $300 at the airport. I mean, how do, you, how do you go out to Southeast Asia with $300 in your pocket and expect, you know, that to take, that's not going to take care of you. But God did. All we had was God's word. We had faith in him. Let's go back to Mark chapter 11. All right, verse 22 through 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. This this literally means have the God kind of faith. Like the faith that God has, have that kind of faith. You know, God has a lot of faith to entrust his kingdom to humanity. To entrust a kingdom that he uh, began in, in the new covenant. And to entrust it to his disciples that he spent three and a half years with. I mean, what, what CEO starts a company and then three and a half years later, he's out of there. Jesus did it and entrusted them with his kingdom. And of course, he gave us the mighty mighty Holy Spirit of a living God who raised Jesus from the dead. And obviously that's how he's accomplishing it all. It's all by his Holy Spirit. It's by his grace. But all that to say, God has faith. He had faith in us. And so we are to have the God kind of faith. Now, you know, that faith is what man originally uh, began to walk in. In the beginning of time when God created Adam and Eve. And of course, that kind of faith fell during the fall. But God reinstated it. Those that are born again, that have experienced the new birth, we can have the God kind of faith. And that is what Jesus was inspiring in his disciples. 
That's what Peter grabbed a hold of when he was out on the boat in the middle of the storm and Jesus comes walking. And Peter said, Jesus, Lord, if that's you, call me to come walk out on the water as well. And Jesus said, come, step out of the boat. It's about time someone believes that they can do what I'm doing. Jesus expected his disciples to walk in faith, to have the God kind of faith. Verse 23 says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says, are you a whoever? Jesus is not you know, saying, whatever apostle, whatever man of God. He's saying, whoever. Are you a whoever? Yes. The answer is yes. You are a whoever. So whoever says, which is so, so important, so vital to seeing things take place. It's not just that you believe, but it's that you begin to speak. You've got to begin to speak. Whoever says. So if we believe in our heart that Jesus died for us, that he, is, he, he, he rose from the dead, if we believe in our heart, and what? And we confess with our mouth. You've got to believe and you've got to confess. You've got to believe and you've got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Then you'll be saved. It's two steps. And it's the same with faith. You've got to begin to believe God's word. Don't let doubt, which is what he says, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. Don't doubt. Don't walk in unbelief whatsoever. Maybe I'll share that in another video. The power of unbelief. When the disciples, they couldn't cast a demon out of a, of a boy because they had unbelief in their heart. Unbelief can stifle the power of God. In that instance, in that case, it wasn't a matter of it being God's will because Jesus said, bring the boy to me. I'm going to take care of business. And he relieved that boy. He cast that demon out and said, never enter him again. But when the disciples said, Jesus, how come we couldn't get the job done? He said, because of your unbelief. Unbelief is sin. God hates unbelief. So don't doubt in your heart, but look, but believes that those things he says will be done, believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And a lot of, a lot of people, they want to put stipulations on this. But Jesus said, whatever he says, you can have what you say. You can have what you say. You got to have a faith talk. And look, that's going to be ridiculous. It's going to look ridiculous. When, when Jairus brought Jesus to his home, his daughter had died. And Jesus walks into the home. And I imagine in that culture, they must have been making quite a commotion because Jesus said, Calm down. Why all this commotion? The girl is just, she's just sleeping. Now in the natural, she was dead in the natural. And they're making a big scene. They're crying. And Jesus said, why all this commotion? The girl's just sleeping. And you know what the Bible says? When God, who was in the flesh, was, was speaking faith, he was doing that faith talk. The Bible says that they ridiculed him. Think about that. God in the flesh, he's, he's, he's doing that faith talk. And they ridiculed him. That means they mocked him. Ugh, who's this guy? Oh, you, you're speaking faith. Uh-huh, I see. That means they made fun of him. You know what Jesus did? put them out. 
people are going to look at you and think that when you begin to speak by faith, you begin to speak the opposite of what you're seeing in the natural, they're going to think that you're ridiculous. And some people may even be offended with you like they were offended with Jesus. Oh, well, isn't this Joseph's son? Aren't his brothers and sisters here? We know his mom. He's from Nazareth. And they'll begin to mock and ridicule you. They'll insult you. Why? Because you're speaking faith. That's happening to you? Hey, that's all right. You're in good company. Verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Faith believes that you have already received it. That your healing took place 2,000 years ago on the cross. Yeah, but what about the symptoms? In Jesus' name, you've got to go. Right now, I am healed by the blood of Jesus. You know, faith is not waiting for God to do something. Faith is exercising what you believe and making it happen. Faith is not waiting and, and just asking, Look, what is God trying to teach me in this storm? Jesus rebuked the storm and commanded it to cease. You've got to begin to speak to mountains. You've got to speak to your problems. You've got to speak to the issues. Command it to line up with God's word and then thank God for the breakthrough. Thank God for the healing. If you're believing for a healing, don't just hope. I hope God heals me. Find four scriptures. Find ten scriptures that are found in the Bible and begin to stand on those scriptures and declare that you are healed today. Not that you will be healed, but that you are healed today. You see, we need this kind of faith for the things that we're facing in our country today. You, we're looking at the economic developments of what's taking place. We're looking at agendas of globalists. All these issues that we're facing in our time, we're going to have to walk in faith and believe in the God of the Bible, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that the God who delivered the Israelites out of the hands of Egypt is capable to deliver you today. And if he's able to cause them to live in the blessings, then he's able to cause you to live in the blessings today, today. Listen, God wants to give you his best. In fact, the Bible says, I think it's uh, 2 uh, Timothy, uh, sorry, 1 Timothy 6, verse 17, that God gives us richly all things to enjoy. You have to begin to believe that God is a good father and he gives us things to enjoy. He blesses us richly. God wants to give you his best. Say that now. God wants to give me his best. When I look at my life, God has given me the best calling. I'm called to preach, to teach God's people. He called my wife and I to go to the mission field, to Southeast Asia. I'm telling you, God has blessed me. He's blessed me with an amazing wife. He's given us beautiful kids. He's given us a beautiful church in Jonesboro, Louisiana. He's given us a beautiful house. God has richly blessed us. And all those, those things are not just so the, the, the world and the wicked are to enjoy. 
God wants to transfer the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. Because when the wicked have the wealth, do you know what they do? They open up strip clubs, casinos, gambling facilities, you name it. They pay for evil to abound. But when God's people are blessed, do you know what they do? They open up orphanages. They open up nonprofit organizations and they send missionaries around the world. They bless. They send, they pay for kids to go to school. They open up hospitals. They care for people. So I'm believing that God is going to transfer. He's already doing it. He's transferring the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. But just because that's a principle and God wants to do it doesn't mean that you're going to reap that benefit unless you begin to line up your faith, your belief system with what God says and you begin to contend for it and believe that you're walking in the blessing today. Hallelujah. God. God wants to grow your faith. He wants to grow your faith. If you're finding yourself looking at everything that's going on and you're thinking, how can I do it? You can walk in faith. Think about Noah. God spoke to Noah and said there was a flood coming. There was wickedness all over the earth. And for a hundred years, he believed God. He didn't look at what he was seeing in the natural. And that's the problem. So many Christians are looking at the natural. They're getting caught up with what they see and hear in the natural. And they're not seeing through the lens of faith. They're not seeing with the eyes and the ears of faith. That only comes by hearing the voice of God. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's our exposure to God's word that will lead us to hear his voice. There's something very tangible when God begins to speak. It makes his word come alive. And that's my prayer for you today. That as you read God's word, that you, that, that you become exposed to God's word, that you will begin to hear his voice like never before. And it will cause faith to rise up in you.